group, Dr. Nathaniel Berg, says Guam needs to get ready for the inevitable arrival of the variant here. Nestor Lacanto leads tonight's top story. We feel there is an urgent need to get ready for not just Omicron, but the potential for another variant. The Physicians Advisory Group met last evening, and after a thorough discussion, uh, there was a unanimous decision to make sure that we get out to the public the need, the, the physician advisory groups feeling that there is an urgent need for Guam to get prepared for Omicron and whatever virus may come, virus variant may come after that. He says that's because no one is sure what the complete impact will be. People are getting sick, it's far more infectious, but if you're a healthy adult, it seems okay. The issue is, we don't have big enough studies yet to know that that is true. We don't have enough information to know if it's infecting children at a higher rate, but it seems to be. It seems to be that younger children are getting infected more. He says protection is available and they want the children to be as protected as much as possible. Right now, what we are feel from the Physician Advisory Group is an urgent need for the Department of Education to make those in uh, vaccinations available to every parent that wants their kids vaccinated. And there's a unifying place where that takes place, and that's at the schools. There is no plan at this point to revert back to greater restrictions. If we don't get the children vaccinated and the adults fully protected with that third dose, uh, we may be singing a different story soon. It's not that I'm saying, uh, oh, I'm so frightened of this. What I'm saying is we have an opportunity right now to get really well prepared. That opportunity goes away as soon as a new variant is here and is, is running crazy through the community as did the Delta. You can't do it at that point. You then need to tighten up restrictions. If we get prepared, we can avoid that. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. The Guam Department of Education responds to the head of the Physicians Advisory Group call to urgent action. According to Guam Department of Education Superintendent John Fernandez, GDOE met with Acting Governor Joshua Tenorio on Thursday, as well as doctors, and they are stressing the urgency of getting all children 5 through 11 vaccinated as soon as possible. He says they agree with them. In fact, from day one, GDOE has supported the Adams vaccination efforts by utilizing Ukudu High School for community vaccination clinics and by partnering at schools to do vaccination clinics outside of school hours. However, according to Fernandez, they are urging that vaccination clinics during school hours be the next step. He says, quote, obviously that is going to take more thought and planning, which we are doing with the acting governor's staff. The superintendent says they first need to hear from parents. Parents need to be the ones making this decision. If parents aren't ready to have their kids vaccinated, this will never work. He says they are counting on the doctors and public health to continue to provide information to the public regarding the safety and availability of the vaccines and to continue to maintain options throughout the island for vaccination. In the meantime, GDOE has committed to supporting outreach to parents to determine their willingness and support for in-school vaccination clinics. Once they get their responses, GDOE will have a better idea how to proceed. Fernandez adds parental support is crucial and because that's the case, we can't take any shortcuts. KUM's Tomas Manglonia joins us this evening live from Saipan with some grim news. Good evening, Tomas. Here on Saipan as the island records a fourth COVID-19 related fatality today. As the sun set here on the island, parents and students coming home from work and school as restrictions loom. Here's more from this morning's press conference. Today, uh, unfortunately, we have uh, one more death uh, with COVID. The CNMI's fourth COVID-19 related death was recorded today. It's never easy, uh, regardless whether it's COVID case or any other case, when uh, a family member leaves us in the community. Um, makes us realize that we, um, that life is very precious. The island surpassed 1,000 total cases, 771 cases found just in the past month likely due to the Delta variant. We are talking about uh, perhaps implementing a new curfew, uh, and that is uh, perhaps uh, moving it up to, or moving down, however you want to see it, uh, probably to about 10 o'clock in the evening. Um, and also looking at uh, those uh, private establishments uh, to have a choice whether to open up the establishment at 50%, 
or uh, at 100% making uh, all patriots um, asking for their COVID uh, vaccination card. So if an establishment decides that they want to ask for uh, the COVID, uh, their vaccination cart, then they can go ahead and open and operate at 100%. Those restrictions could include indoor and outdoor social gathering limits. They plan to do mass antigen testing across Rhoda, Tinian, and Saipan. I was very fortunate that, that towards the end, where, every, where 85% of our community has been vaccinated, is when we hit that peak. They've set up a quarantine site on Tinian, and the task force is traveling to Rhoda to establish one there. More help is on the way. We have um, the HHS Regional Emergency Coordinator on island um, assessing and providing federal support as needed. We also have uh, CDC support that will be arriving uh, today and uh, uh, next week, Monday. So this is again to help us with the uh, epidemiology support. There's, um, we are also receiving a um, disaster a medical assistance team of about 10 uh, starting today and tomorrow to assist CHCC in the mission of monoclonal antibody infusion, uh, subcutaneous, subcutaneous treatments, and the mission of vaccinations. More vaccines are on the way this weekend as the NMI ran out of Pfizer and Moderna boosters and first doses. Meanwhile, with at least 548 active cases, some residents urging for home isolation instead of being placed in a government facility after testing positive or presenting symptoms. We don't have the resource to have every household monitored. Um, at this point right now, you know, we're we are finding individuals in quarantine. These are individuals that are, are staying in the, in the hotel and waiting for the result. The results have to be, uh, the tests have to be done at a specific time in order to determine whether or not they have the virus. Doing it earlier can uh, basically generate a false negative. It'll remain in place. I understand it's inconvenient, but it does save lives. It does save further transmission out in the community. And just before news time, Isaiah, the CMI Governor's Office and the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation telling us that it's not going to come until next Tuesday. Those restrictions that were mentioned in that story, uh, we're expecting them at the earliest at the end of next week instead. And it appears based on the press conference this morning that it will be partially based on vaccination status. We're also expecting some sort of change to the travel protocol, although it's unclear what exactly that will entail. As for now, we'll continue to bring you to the latest of information as the COVID-19 surge continues here on Saipan. Reporting live on Saipan, Tomas Maglotnia for KUAM News. Tomas Maglotnia, thank you for that live report from Saipan. Several units from the Guam Fire Department responded to a report of a possible drowning at Matapeng Beach in Tumon this morning. GFD spokesperson Sherika Targalov says units responded just after 8 o'clock this morning. She says the victim was a man approximately 60 years old and was pulseless and breathless. Medics transported him to Guam Memorial Hospital Authority. The Guam Police Department has identified the individual who was found unresponsive lying along Route 1 in Jigo yesterday morning as 23-year-old Taylor Ed Renue. He is a resident of the village. Police responded to the area just before 4 o'clock Thursday morning. GPD's Criminal Investigation Division is conducting a death investigation to determine the circumstances involving his death. Anyone who has information about the incident is urged to contact police at 671-475-8615 or 8617. The AG's office confirms that at the request of the Guam Police Department, an independent investigative team or IIT was activated to investigate an incident involving a police officer. This video has gone viral circulating on social media. KUM News has learned this is not the first time officers have responded to this area in Zedido. AG spokesperson Carlina Charfris confirms that this is an ongoing investigation. GPD is not commenting on the incident. Former customs officer 48-year-old Henry Alvande was arrested after Guam Police Department officers stopped his truck near Tarzan Falls with an expired license plate. During a search of the vehicle, they observed a loaded shotgun and rifle in the car, 44 resealable plastic bags, three plastic straws containing meth, and a small baggie containing meth as well. Alvande was interviewed and admitted to the weapons and 
to the weapons and meth. He also stated his previous convictions of a federal criminal charge that he is currently on probation for. He is being charged with possession of a Schedule II controlled substance with intent to deliver possession of a firearm without a firearm. ID and a possession of a Schedule II controlled substance. He appeared in Superior Court where a cash bail was set at $25,000. His next hearing is December 13th. It was in 2015, Al Vendier, along with several other government officials, were indicted for accepting kickbacks and bribes from local businesses. The other nine co-defendants in the case pled guilty and were sentenced. He was sentenced in 2019 to one year and one day in prison in district court. He had received a reduction in his sentence because of his cooperation in another federal drug case. The Republican Party of Guam going to bat for Senator Joanne Brown over what the senator has called a witch hunt by the Port Authority of Guam. The GOP in a release said Port GM Roy Respicio has reached a, quote, new low by using his position as Port GM to continue his personal fight against Senator Brown. The port had issued a resolution targeting Brown over what the port says are legal retroactive raises received by Brown where she was Port GM. The resolution also empowered Respicio to seek civil and criminal action against Brown, but AG Levin Camacho said there would be challenges to pursuing criminal charges, including proving willful misconduct and the statute of limitations. Meanwhile, the GOP release also called out Respicio for retroactive raises for senators he supported and voted for while he was a sitting senator. It's that time of the year and we want to know how have you started holiday shopping? Let us know on our social media pages by commenting on our daily question. Before we head into the break, KUAM and Coast 360 are kicking off the month of December with Making Spirits Bright. We want to see videos and pictures of your Christmas trees, decorations, and holiday photos. Make sure to use the hashtag Making Spirits Bright Guam on Facebook and Instagram or Instagram. Check out these images submitted by Jennifer Benevenzi and Carlos Kensaniza Ken of Zedido. Our family was recently challenged with a difficult medical condition where my son needed a liver transplant. And I asked Cabo Select Care to assist me with that and, and he required off-island care. In fact, it can only be taken care of off-island. Uh, so Cabo Select Care was there to help uh, with all the referrals and the off-island coverage. Cabo Select Care, healthcare that's always there for you. Federal employees and annuitants enroll today. Half a day. This is Governor Lou Leon Guerrero. If you're struggling to pay rent and utilities because of the pandemic, your government can help. Our emergency rental assistance program provides direct relief to you. To date, over $6.9 million has helped over 1,500 households. Apply online at doa.guam.gov or call the Department of Administration's Emergency Rental Assistance Program at 671-638-4518 or 19. It's a special delivery to your inbox every week with your KUAM News Roundup, program advisories, and promotions. Sign up for the weekly KUAM Digital Digest today on KUAM.com. Welcome back. The Mayor's Council of Guam won't be getting into the middle of the controversy over millions of dollars in American Rescue Plan funding supposedly due to them. In a news conference Thursday, Congressman Michael St. Nicholas said the mayor should be getting $50 million in what's classified as county or non-entity funding. 
He charged that the governor has been ignoring the spirit of the law, misleading the public and holding on to the money for her priorities. But the governor's office said villages don't qualify as countries and that it's disingenuous to try and pass them off as such. Adaloop adds that it will also result in lower overall funding from Guam. Meanwhile, here's MCOG Executive Director Angel Sablon's response. Well, first, Nestor, let me, let me just say I, I don't want to get into a... Uh a pissing contest between uh, the governor and the congressman. We're not clamoring on, on the governor's door to say, where's the money? Because we knew all along that we were going to get the money. We're looking forward to that announcement uh, from the governor's office. We also thank uh, you know, the, the congressman for uh, looking out uh, for these funds and making sure that certainly they are available and certainly that they go to the right places. Sablon says they were assured they'd be getting $17.6 million in non-entitlement funds over two years. Adaloop has also told them that while they won't get $32 million in county funding directly, it will be spent on a wide range of village projects. A warehouse used by the Department of Agriculture was recently vandalized and burglarized. The agency is asking the public for help. KUM's Daniel Perez reports in our next story. I came into the our warehouse, broke it into our warehouse, and... They did, uh, this This has been ongoing for like uh, four or five months. They did try to mitigate as much as possible. Uh, they did steal, uh, stole three Nissan Frontiers. Uh, they were in the process of trying to get to two more, but I believe some something or somebody might, something might have spooked them uh, and they weren't able to complete the job. Conservation Lieutenant Richard Brigadio explains what he believes happened on the day of the break-in and details all that was stolen. They actually um, vandalized some uh, vehicles to move it out of the way and then uh, broke open the, the warehouse doors and then went in and um, took the, uh, the power generator. Along with three Nissan Frontiers and an Allman brand generator that was stolen, eight 4x4 tires with 17-inch rims for a Toyota Tacoma, Solar light panels and a gas tank were also taken. A $2,000 reward has been put out for anyone who can provide information. First and foremost, it's just a public awareness and, uh, to, and an outreach to the public, right? That uh, the vandalism and theft are occurring. Uh, most notably, we know that they're, they're targeting Nissan uh, vehicles nissan frontier pickups earlier model so you know small businesses uh, owners of nissan frontiers we just wanted them to be aware on behalf of the department of agriculture regadio was asking the community's assistance in locating the stolen items if you have any information contact the conservation officers at 671-864-8652 or 671-300-0760 or email them at conservation at doag.guam.gov. Daniel Perez reporting for Guam's News Network. Gura Director Ray Tapasna gave updates at yesterday's homelessness assistance and poverty prevention meeting on the emergency housing vouchers that were given to families and individuals. Gura had received 169 referrals from the Guam Homeless Coalition and other agencies. We've actually issued 50 vouchers of the total 87 uh, to uh, families and individuals. Of the 50 vouchers that we issue, 27 families have already been housed. Um, of the 27 families housed, 18 are families with minors. And I, I'll give you the breakdown on that. The, the, uh, 59 minors are actually being housed by the emergency housing voucher program. And of the 59 minors, uh, we have one family, LT, we have one family that has seven minors in the household. We have two families with six minors um, uh, times two. So there's six minors for each. We have one family with five minors one family with four and we have six families with three minors per household. 
Tapasia added that some of these families had run-ins with Child Protective Services. Acting Governor Joshua Tenorio clarified the reason for CPS involvement was due to substandard or deficient living conditions. Thanks to the emergency voucher program, the families with housing pro problems can now stay together. The Guam Prevention Trust is continuing their mission to preserve Guam's heritage. GPT's Joe Canata revealed some of the ideas currently being tossed around regarding what should be done with the Antitana area in Santa Rita. About a center for a cultural, for a, a cultural center, um, a research and development center for, for flora and fauna. The 74 acres is home to 17 Laddie sets. Some of the core agencies involved in the crafting of the master plan include the Shippo's office, the Department of Agriculture, and the University of Guam. It's a season to be merry, and the island's leaders are reminding everyone to celebrate responsibly. A virtual proclamation signing was held today, pro proclaiming December 15 to January 1st, 2022, in recognition of the high visibility enforcement campaign, drive sober or get pulled over, and drive high, get a DUI. DPW Director Vince Ariola warned the community that they can do everything they can to make the roads as safe as possible. But in the end, it all depends on who's behind it's the nothing will. to be ashamed about or to be mamalo about. Pick up the phone, call somebody, have somebody drive for you. It, it's, it's so much better than getting into an accident or causing an, an accident and, and then looking back and saying it, all, it all it would have taken is just a phone call and, and I wouldn't be in this predicament. 28 law enforcement officers are currently undergoing training in preparation of the campaign, which aims to educate people on the dangers of driving under the influence. The island's local law enforcement agencies will be stepping up patrols and enforcement efforts as the campaign launches. Sports is up next with Dave Delgado. Keep it here. You're watching KUAF. Your community calendar is brought to you by Taco Bell. Whether it's your first meal or your fourth meal, we've got you covered. Taco Bell, live moss. new Hyundai Tucson. Brand new thing. Building on the past, we at Docomo Pacific Business believe in helping businesses move forward and together, changing the way we get things done to make you and your company reach your highest potential. Trust in our commitment to bring you the best solutions for all your business goals. We our Docomo Pacific business. Let's work better together. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. The Simon Sanchez Sharks are now 10 and 1 in the East of Volleyball League. The Sharks picked up a tough road win over the GFK Islanders in five sets behind. Kana Kanemoto and company. The third place Islanders flipped the switch. In the second set, JFK got some good play from Hannah, Meinick, Koyuki Santos, Maya Andres, and Maria Calvo, who all contributed late in the set. Alessandra Pagdalao with the shot here. Gabby Fernandez was able to close it out for JFK for the 28-26 win. Islanders went on to take the third set 25-23. Felicita Rivera was clutch in the fourth, tying the game at 17 with an ace. Raven Rivera tied the set at 18. Kanemoto put the Sharks ahead 23-22 with the kill. Sanchez would go on to win the fourth 25-23. The fifth set featured the longest rally of the game with the set tied at 12. 
Kane Kanemoto shot followed by an ace from teammate Karis Franquez ended the game in the Sharks' favor. Sanchez picked up the win 25-14, 26-28, 23-25, 25-23, 15-12. The University of Guam's varsity baseball program is looking for athletes to play for the Tritons in the upcoming spring and fall seasons. Aspiring collegiate baseball players ages 16 to 22 are invited to tryouts to be held December 4th and 5th from 9 in the morning to 12 in the afternoon at the George Washington High School baseball field. For more info, contact Coach Rocky Alcantara Jr. at 747-4579. In programming news, you know we always got you covered. Tune in and catch all of your NFL action right here on the stations of KUAM. Monday, December 6th on KUAM TV 11, 4 in the morning, NFL on CBS, LA Chargers at Cincinnati Bengals. Keep it locked to KUAM TV 11 at 725 in the morning. More NFL on CBS, Baltimore Ravens at Pittsburgh Steelers. Switch it over to KUAM TV 8 at 1120 in the morning. NBC Sunday Night Football, Denver Broncos at Kansas City Chiefs. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. Half a day. As we look ahead to a brighter tomorrow, Matson's commitment to Guam and Micronesia remains stronger than ever. While the world around us is ever changing, what remains unchanged is our commitment to you, our customers, and the island communities we serve. Shipping is what we do best, and serving our community is at the heart of everything we do. But we don't do it alone. This is why we support organizations that make caring for the people and the environment a top priority. We know that many count on Matson's lifeline services in the Pacific. And that's why we continue to work hard to ensure that our shipments remain on time all the time. Matson recently added another Aloha class vessel to our schedule. We now have two of Matson's largest and fastest ships serving Guam from the U.S. West Coast and Hawaii. With our new state-of-the-art vessels, we stand ready to support the region's economic recovery. Thank you for the privilege of serving you for the last 25 years and you can count on Madsen to be here for the next 25 years and beyond. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of the birthday shout outs from the Coach Sloan Creamery Birthday Club. Happy birthday on this Friday, December 3rd to Jacoa Jude Benevente. Happy birthday to you from your friends and family. Bobby Cruz, happy birthday to you and we love you and hope you have an amazing day. From the Earth Mine and Our Squad, very nice. Haley Salas, happy 18th birthday to you. We're probably cousins, and we hope you have an amazing day from also the Yours, Mine, and Our Squad. Also, Brianne Cruz celebrating also birth birthday number 18, and also hope you had an awesome day from also the Yours, Mine, and Ours Squad. Also, great job with the shoutouts, guys. Happy birthday number 15 to Charlie Balbastro from Mom and Dad. As a grown young man, we're hoping to see him change the pavilion forever in the future. Well inspired and God bless. Isaac Sellis celebrates birthday number 14 this year and to our Mungy boy. Hugs and kisses son from Mommy, Daddy, Jake, Sarah, Silver, Serena, Chewy boy, Grandma, Papa, Uncle Roland, Auntie Christy, Sienna, and Roan. We wish you the best and happiest birthday and they say God bless you son. And happy birthday to this very, very lovely lady. This is my mom, Leslie Salas. So happy birthday to mom from myself, Stacy, Marcus, Grover, Uncle Dave, and all your loving in-laws and nieces and nephews here and on the mainland, as well as your St. John's family. We all love you. And mom, you are truly the best. Have a wonderful birthday. Remember, you can be a part of the Coastal and Creamery Birthday Club by registering online at KUAM.com. And it's that time of the week where we announce the winner of a yo yummy Coastal and Creamery cake. 
This week's winner of a yummy Cold Stone Creamery ice cream cake is Lucia G. McDonald, who you remember, had a birthday earlier this week, and Miss Lucia turns 95 this year. We're so happy to have you as part of our island community, so happy extended birthday. We hope you and your family celebrate safely and have a wonderful, wonderful island weekend. That's going to do it for us here on Primetime Guahu Isaiah. Again, thank you for watching and have a safe evening.